Welcome everyone. My name is David White and I'm the Dean of the Honors College and it's my privilege and, and honor to be here to welcome you to our uh, convocation for 2021. Um, you are uh, a great class of over 300 freshman students who are joining over 500 other honors students so that uh, there will be a total of over 800 honors students on this campus uh, this fall. Uh, we're really excited about that and, and we're seeing the Honors College dream and vision really come into fruition with your arrival uh, as we grow to uh, exceed the numbers we've always had. Um, it's a great day to be a pirate and it's a great day to be an Honors student. And as a student here in the college, you're going to be um, given many opportunities, you're going to be given uh, what we believe is a great deal of support and we want you to take advantage of those opportunities and that support to achieve your goals. In fact, we really want the Honors College to be a platform from which you can leap to your next great adventure and, and your next great success. Um, things are different here now. Um, if we've learned anything over the past two or three years, we've learned that change can come anytime and we have to always be willing to adapt and pivot and move to what works. Um, you're taking a class, uh, Honors 2000 and Honors 3000 will be in the spring uh, where you're going to be engaged in, or you are engaged in a rather unique experience um, that you've probably never had before as a student. Um, I just want you to really uh, embrace these opportunities I recall my times as an undergraduate student. Yes, it was a long time ago, but I still remember some of those. And, and I'm sad to say that I didn't take full advantage of all the opportunities that I had. I didn't feel like they were important. But now as I look back on those, uh, I realize that even that music appreciation class or art appreciation class uh, or other course that I took, really, if I had embraced it like I, I would now, um, I would have gained a lot from that. So please, please step out of your comfort zones and, and look for opportunities uh, to grow and develop. Uh, you never know what's around the corner and uh, you're gonna have a great opportunity here to uh, take advantage of that. Um, I remember a quote that uh, there was a famous hockey player named Wayne Gretzky. They called Wayne Gretzky the great one if you haven't seen much about that, um, you might want to Google him. But Wayne Gretzky made a, a statement one time that's always stuck with me and he said, I've never made a shot that I didn't take. And I think what he was saying there is take advantage of opportunities, take a risk, take a chance, step out, step out of your comfort zone and, and be a part of, of the Honors College and all the great things that are going on. And I think you'll be amazed at, at the payoffs that you'll receive. Um, I encourage you to look to your uh, upper class students for advice to um, come and visit with us throughout the year and in your time here and uh, help us to provide that platform, as I mentioned earlier, for your success. So um, I know we've got a lot more on the program here, so I'll turn it over to the next uh, speaker, but thank you for the opportunity to welcome you here, and thank you for all the difference you're gonna make here at ECU over the next three or four or five years of your career here. and the Honors College Class of 2025. My name is Amanda Powell and I'm the President of the Honors College Student Council. I spent only six months on campus before COVID-19. This pandemic has taught the world the power of community, loneliness, failure, and mostly how to use Zoom. As the world continues to learn how to move forward, I, like all of you, am figuring out my place. Everyone says that college is a place where people find who they are, a place where we learn how to live and think and while all of this is true, what they fail to tell you is that college is a place where everything is constantly changing. A place where your failures and successes happen simultaneously. And a place where you are constantly pushed in 500 different directions at the same time. This change is overwhelming, and finding our own place in this new community is scary. But unlike most, we have a built-in community for you to join. The 
faculty, staff, and student council are here to help you grow in this constantly changing world. I am proud to be a part of this honors family that has pushed me to find my place in this world and a family that supports me in my failures and successes. Failures are inevitable, and when you learn to look at them not as world ending, but as world changing, your outlook on life will change. Your next four years here will go, fast, go by faster than you can imagine. So I encourage you to find yourself while also remembering that no matter what, you have people in your corner cheering for you in every aspect. I'm excited for this year to come and to continue to grow the honors community here at ECU. Class of 2025, welcome and good luck. I can't wait to see the impact that you have on this campus and our community. Every Honors College event post or Zoom, my name is Maggie Vale and here I am in another video. I'm a senior here in the Honors College with a double major in Political Science and Security Studies with a minor in Criminal Justice and as cheesy as it sounds, I was in your position just three years ago listening to a speaker just like I am doing right now wearing this exact same blazer and I can tell you that time really does fly here in college. I've heard a lot of talks throughout my time here at ECU and I've learned a lot along the way. Today, I wanna to do something a little bit different. I wanna tackle some misconceptions about Honors College students that I found myself believing in the beginning. First, I wanna talk about making friends in Honors College. I'm sure some of you listening feel like you have found your people and are right at home already, and others of you feel like you have yet to connect with anyone since arriving here on campus. I'm here to tell you that both are completely normal and both are okay. I'm, I was assuming that they issued friend groups on the day one of college, but when I got here to ECU, I didn't know a single soul. I made friends with my roommate by proximity, and she's still one of my best friends to this day, but making friends outside of living in a 10 by 10 box together with someone can be a little bit more complicated. Looking on social media, it can look like everyone has a friend group except for you. People with weekly routines together, inside jokes, matching Halloween costumes, or just having someone to go to the dining hall with, but I promise your people will come. Keep putting yourself out there and introducing yourself with your name and your major and where your hometown is about a thousand more times and eventually it'll work. I came in with nobody here at ECU, but I'm leaving with people who I love and who support me and I have created a community here for myself. That community and support were there for me four years ago when all I wanted to do was be a lawyer and they're there for me now as I prepare for a life in higher education. To take you back to my freshman year, I thought I had my whole life figured out. An upperclassman stood in front of me and talked about changing their career paths, and I thought to myself, that would never be me. I've wanted to practice law for years, and what the heck am I gonna do with a political science degree if I don't go to law school? And I bet a lot of you are thinking the same thing. I've wanted to be a doctor my whole life, or I can't imagine not going to physical therapy school, but trust me, it can happen. It's totally and completely daunting changing the path that you're on, but it's better to make that change now in this environment than 20 years from now when you're miserable because you didn't follow your passions whenever you were 18. What's the worst that could happen? You could have you have to tell people that you changed your mind or that you didn't want to spend the rest of your life miserable. Nobody can say they haven't changed their path or changed their opinion on something. And people who really matter and people who care about you will support you in whatever makes you happy and whatever gets you up in the morning. My story about changing from being a lawyer to wanting to work in higher education wasn't one with a swift transition. I did not have an awakening one day or speak to my advisor and change my major. I was a little late to the game when I realized that I was ready to make that decision and that commitment. I was really deep into a political science degree with security studies and criminal justice not far behind. And now I know a lot for a lot of you, political science sounds a lot like torture, and trust me, some of it is it is, but you really don't know torture until you're sitting in second row in philosophy class with logic and they start using algebra on the whiteboard. If you are familiar with the law school process, you have to take the LSAT in order to apply. This is a logic games based test that has zero to do with actually learning the law. But I wanted to take the test, I wanted to go to law school, so I took the logic class, and I was a few weeks in when things really started to hit the fan for me. The letters and numbers came out, and the formulas came out, and I didn't even own the textbook yet. And not that that would have been really any help at that point. Uh, I took my first test and absolutely bombed it. I'm not talking about like an honors college bomb. It was to the point where I could no longer make a good grade in the class. And I started to take a step back and weigh my options. I could stay in the class and suffer through and try to fight for whatever grade I could, or I could take a W on my transcript and withdraw from the class completely. After discussing my options with the staff here in the Honors College and prioritizing myself, I withdrew. This may seem silly to a lot of you, but I think a lot of Honors College students will relate to me when I say that I felt like I had failed. 
But here I am now, the keynote speaker at Convocation, and not a single person has ever asked me about that W in my transcript. What felt like everything to me at the time turned out to be nothing in the long run, and now here I am telling you that, I'm not telling you that you should withdraw from your classes whenever they get hard, but I do encourage you to take a step back and think to yourself about your situation, which should feel so overwhelming at the time, and wonder if it will really have an impact on you in the end. So allow me to change these misconceptions for you as you enter your next college years. It's okay not to have a perfect friend group day one or day 100. It's okay to change your plans for, or for your plans to change you, and it's okay to fail. Good afternoon, fellow students and faculty. I'm Shayla Raleigh, the EC Scholars Roundtable Chair, and it is a privilege to be speaking to you all today. This past year has made me realize that there are a lot of things outside of your control. Whether it is what is going on in the world, other people's actions, or how other people perceive you. Realizing this has allowed me to evaluate the things in my life that I can't control and focus my energy and time on them. You can't control other people's actions, but you can always control your own actions and how you react to other people's. You can't control the way other people see you, but you can always control the way you perceive yourself. You can't control the way a community is when you walk into it, but you can control the imprint you leave on it when you are gone. I have a piece of a poem I would like to read, and I know half of you just completely tuned me out as soon as I mentioned the poem, but it's one of my favorites, so I'm going to read it anyway. It's called A Man of the Class by Peter Dale Winbrook Sr. When you get what you want in your struggle for self, and the world makes you king for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what the man has to say. For it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you must pass, the fellow whose verdict comes most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. He's the fellow to please and remind all the rest, for he's with you clear to the end, and you've passed your most dangerous, difficult test if the man in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down a pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you cheated the man in the glass. College will challenge you in ways you can't imagine, but allow you to grow in ways you never thought you could. Be a good person, stay true to yourself, and don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. This past year has made me exponentially more appreciative of the support system I have around me and the community I'm able to be a part of at ECU. The faculty here in the Honors College is made up of some of the best and most supportive people I have ever encountered, and I can't imagine these last couple years without them. They are the glue that holds Honors College together and makes it the one-of-a-kind community that it is. Make the effort to build relationships with the faculty, and they will support you through every triumph, defeat, and uncertainty throughout your time here. If you invest this time in getting to know them, they will help make sure the person in the glass is someone you are proud of. I know this because they have done it for me. Coming back together on campus means a lot of different things, but most importantly, it means a better opportunity to serve your community. Martin Luther King Jr. said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Make this become one of the easiest questions for you to answer. There is such a need in so many different parts of Greenville. Service can and will look different for everyone because we all have talents that allow us to play different roles and making the community a better place. Find somewhere you fit and make change happen. Recently, I was filling out post-grad applications and I was asked what my greatest accomplishment was. I said what I was most proud of is the relationships I have been able to build with the people around me. Accomplishing things like making good grades, doing research or extracurriculars are much easier to do because they are quantifiable and controllable. Gaining the trust and respect of people is much harder and therefore substantially more rewarding. I have often reflected on the early defines of community. There are a lot of different factors. The people, the place, shared interests or passions, the list could go on. In my opinion, the most defining aspect of an exceptional community is one that makes the thought of leaving so hard. We have all learned that the time we are able to spend with others is precious. Capitalize on this time by creating a space that will be hard for you to walk away from. Brace yourselves for a phenomenal four years. It will come with unforeseeable challenges and improvement opportunities you may or may not be ready for. But I'm confident that if you devote time to establishing relationships with the people around you, it will be some of the most rewarding years of your life. I hope you all have enjoyed hearing from Dean White and our student leaders. Their words are encouraging and inspiring. This is an exciting time for you all, and it reminds me of an unattributed quote I like to share at the beginning of each new school year. 
The start of something new brings the hope of something great. Anything is possible. This is also an exciting time for all of us connected to the Honors College as we welcome you all back to campus for the first time in over a year. Stop by Mamie Jenkins anytime to say hello. This year we continue to celebrate our 10-year anniversary. Be on the lookout for events throughout the year, celebrating our success, reflecting on your history, and sharing our vision for the next 10 years. You are now a part of this story. You represent 12 states, 59 MC counties, 54 different intended majors. You are athletes, artists, journalists, coders, chefs, dancers, and environmental advocates. You are Eagle Scouts, paged in the North Carolina House of Representatives, competitive spike ball players, professional TikTokers, and small business owners. You are leaders. You are students in the Honors College at ECU, and you are destined to lead the way. During your journey at ECU, the Honors College will provide you with unique educational and high-impact experiences, financial resources, leadership development, and most importantly, an investment in your personal and professional growth as you realize your capabilities. As you take advantage of these unrivaled opportunities and discover yourself in a supportive and nurturing community, you will accept prestigious fellowships and internships with the likes of NASA, the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee, Harvard, the State Bureau of Investigation, or even Parliament. You will showcase your artistic abilities across the country, present research at national conferences, and publish in academic and literary journals. You will dedicate countless hours and ideas to community organizations you care about. You will study abroad in Spain, India, England, Malaysia, Peru, Italy, Belgium, and Honduras. You will tackle wicked problems and pioneer groundbreaking solutions at the Innovation and Design Lab. Your life will change, and you will change lives. You are a powerful and diverse group of students who are invited to join this college because you are curious, motivated, thoughtful, empathetic, and committed to creating a more just world. You are leaders. We have high expectations for each of you, but these expectations include an unwavering promise from the Honors College staff and community. You will, without a doubt, receive the support, resources, and encouragement you need to pursue your goals, stretch yourself as a citizen and scholar, and achieve more than you may have ever imagined. You will join a fascinating, impressive, and collaborative network of innovators and agents of change. That starts with the relationships cultivated with your new classmates and will grow as you connect with upper class students, alumni, and friends of the Honors College. The Honors College is not merely a reward, a reward for your previous efforts. It is a place to meet new people and make lifelong friends. It is a challenge. In the words of American hero, the Honorable John Lewis, it is a challenge to be bold, be brave, be courageous, to go for it. We know you are up for it. We are excited to welcome you and look forward to working with you. Have a remarkable year. I think I crushed that.